Schneider. I'm Phil Schneider. I'm an ex-government worker who worked uh, 17 years in the Black Projects, uh, otherwise known as the Skunk Works. Uh, I worked uh, predominantly uh, helping des to design and build extremely deep underground military basing. Thank you. short overview of my background. I'm a structural engineer, both aerospace as well as uh, military applications. Uh, graduate of uh, the University of Missouri as well as the uh, University of Manchester, England. I worked in Vietnam, got torn to pieces, shot, whatever. Took five years to recuperate, came back, patched me up, so to speak. Um, went to work for Morrison Knudsen. And for Morrison Knudsen, I worked uh, also with EGG, Bechtel, Aerospecial of France. Um, I also worked with Fiat for a while, as far as I can get. Um, I did a lot of work overseas, but predominantly my field was underground mountain basing, also submarine basing. Uh, I wrote uh, uh, several treatises on uh, analyzing rock formations by grain structure, and this grain structure uh, would yield a certain pattern and that certain pattern could be used to analyze and chemically analyze and make special explosives that could be used to uh, blast out large caverns underground. Uh, and even when there were caverns, it could still use shape charges to blast air and rock, although a lot of it was done by laser tunneling and drilling. Uh, I have a copy of a book here I can't sell it, it's my only copy. But uh, uh, this fellow can co corroborate with me. His name is uh, Richard Souter, PhD. He can corroborate with me in regards to everything I'm talking about. Who is it, Mike? Richard uh, Souter, PhD. Here's another man that yeah. okay, we need couldn't find the room. Do you need to give him your ticket? I will. And all that. I guess I'll let you know that. Uh, that uh, kind of the background of my father. My father was a, a German U-boat captain responsible for uh, the sinking of 141 Allied uh, boats. And uh, he got captured by the French, then captured, and then turned over to Third Army, U.S., and then uh, Third Army turned him over to Naval Intelligence, based out of uh, Pensacola, Florida at the time. Uh, he later went to work also in Navy Black Projects. Uh, maybe that's where I started, but it just worked out that way, I guess. Um, anyway, he worked for Naval Operations. He worked on the infamous Philadelphia Experiment. He was involved heavily with that. In fact, I have some of his original notes. <coughs> Anyway, my father, in 
continued to work in the U.S. Navy up until a couple of years before he died. He died two years ago, in 1993, May of 93. And, uh, but his main contribution, other than the Philadelphia experiment, was uh, that he, he uh, was one of the principal engineers of the first nuclear submarine, the USS Nautilus. And uh, he worked with uh, Hyman Rakeover on that project uh, to its fullest from start to finish. He helped design the nuclear reactor. He helped design the metals, uh, the containment vessel. He did all the machining of the uranium pellets that were used. Um, he designed the hull predominantly and some of the graving docks. And so he, he was a major contributor to such such today that even as ideas in air conditioning and filtration are still used today in, in all nuclear submarines in the United States. So, that's so much for my father. Um, he uh, taught me a lot. Uh, he's a pretty silent fellow uh, over time. He told me that uh, I shouldn't work in black projects in the desert regions. Uh, of course, I told him, I'm sorry, I have to work for a living. And uh, in, the, in the early day, in the early 60s, mid 60s, uh, construction work worked and paid really tremendously. And uh, that's where I got to start. One thing led to another. And then when I went over to Vietnam, I got uh, 10 times what a normal construction work would get. And uh, but then the rest of us were great too. And when I got to uh, Hurt and recuperated some five years later. I hurt in 1970, and by 1975 I was bouncing around again. And so uh, at that time I went to work for uh, a number of contractors who were primarily uh, underground base uh, builders. And of course I might give you a brief overview. The first underground bases were basically old gold mines just the tunnels were already there. Um, the first missile base, as a matter of fact, I believe it was in northern Montana, it was an old gold, the gold and silver mine. And the missiles are still in, in the old, in the old uh, off, uh, air shafts. The air shafts are re-drilled out and everything. And, uh, actually, but they made a semi-hardened semi missile base out of, uh, out of uh, an old gold mine, which is kind of unique, same place. Well, uh, the first, basically, the, the main part of the talk will be on uh, what I face underground. Is, I, is there anybody here that uh, is in the frame of mind that they can't take uh, gore or uh, uh, that kind of thing? If there is, uh, uh, there might be a problem because I'm going to get rather graphic. I don't like it, but I can take it. Okay, I'll tone it down a bit. But, uh, obviously, uh, this workshop basically is everything that I missed in the main talk yesterday. And of course, it's pretty hard to cram three and a half to four hours talk in 15 minutes. I've divided the talk into four, <coughs> three topics. Uh, I'm going to talk about dumb bases deep underground military bases, all the dumb bases. Uh, right now there are 131 of them, 129 are fully operational. Each one averages about four and a quarter cubic miles hollowed out underground at an average depth of 5,000 feet down. <coughs> now, of course some of them are shallower, some of them are deeper. Uh, they're strategically located. Uh, <coughs> They were uh, initially built to protect the President of the United States and uh, the government in general, the federal government as well as the political government. Uh, somehow I, the number, the sheer number of the uh, 129 bases uh, with basically the size of a 